cannot change history. It sits on its own foundation. You must learn from it. It's one small step um, towards this entire country. I think it should have come down a long time ago. Just want to take a picture of you. I don't know many years from now, you know, I could show it to my great-grandchildren. It's a day to, to celebrate, but then tomorrow's the day to get back to work. in a tobacco field in Richmond. Now, 131 years later, the largest Confederate statue in the United States, standing in the middle of Monument Avenue, has been dismantled. Thanks for joining us here at Midday. I'm Cheryl Miller. The removal of the Robert E. Lee statue marks a major moment for the city of Richmond, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and for our country. We have in-depth coverage for you. CBS 6's Cameron Thompson talked to local and state leaders about today's event. First, our Matthew Fultz has been on Monument Avenue since early this morning, even before the removal crews arrived. And Matthew, this is an emotional moment for many on both sides of the removal issue. Just before nine, several hundred spectators and journalists watch as a crane lifts the 12-ton bronze statue off the granite pedestal. <laughs> Cheers and applause echo through the fan district as this divisive symbol comes down. There it is, there it is! Send that traitor to his grave! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Get it out of there! The state originally told us to expect an all-day event to remove this massive statue. I guess the guy that's doing it is pretty good at it now. <laughs> Crews then cut the statue in half at Lee's waist to help safely transport the monument to secure storage at a state-owned facility and out of the former capital of the Confederacy. I got here about 7 o'clock. Preparation and timing scored Reginald Carter a front row seat to history. It was definitely emotional and it was surreal. And to me, it was a, a, a prophecy fulfilled of John Mitchell, uh, who was the editor of the Richmond Planet newspaper that was founded, you know, here in Richmond, 1882 by 13 free slaves. He said that, you know, the black man was here to put up the monument. And when that time comes, the black man will be here to see it removed. The 12-ton bronze statue of General Lee was put up in 1890 when historians say white Southerners began erecting Confederate memorials, intimidating structures of the Lost Cause narrative. The Lee statue was the largest in the U.S. still up 150 years after the Civil War. Removing a monument doesn't erase the past, but removing that monument removes the symbol of oppression, the symbol that we are offended by seeing. The iconography of the Confederacy across the country are false idols. Gary Flowers is a lifelong Richmonder and expert of African American history. It was a sense of jubilee, and that's the feeling I got from the spirits of my ancestors who were victims of the enslavement system that these statues symbolized. The monument might be bronze and granite, but Flowers says removing them physically doesn't remove the systemic, societal scars the history leaves behind. They're far more than symbols. Heather Heyer is in a grave today because a white man from Ohio drove nearly a thousand miles to defend the Robert Lee statue in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's a symbolic alleviation of, of generational pain, but it should be a light of a path going forward. It is our individual choice and our institutional charge to now eradicate systemic racism in this country. A day that will live in history as the nation's largest remaining Confederate statue is hoisted from its pedestal and removed from Richmond's Monument Avenue, but just blocks away from the action. In the big picture, this was helping us all cheer seeing the statue come down. Neighbors like Michael Larkin say the process to get here has been less than ideal for residents. Over a year, over a year, um, you would think in that time that somebody would ask, oh, what about the residents? Larkin's home is beyond this tape on West Gray Street. He says while he knew based off signs posted Friday he wouldn't be able to park here, he didn't know it would be like this. There are a lot of people on this street and all along West Gray Street that are not as able, right, as I am or other people are. 
I've lived here uh, for 48 years. On Tuesday night, Rex Scudder says he and his neighbors came home from the squirrels game to find tape up, police telling them they couldn't walk down the sidewalk. They, they said you need to go to the back, except that uh, my neighbors don't have any access from the back uh, that they could use. They're disabled, they can't go in that back gate. 15 minutes later, Scudder says police ended up letting them through, and by Wednesday, residents were allowed to walk in and out. But he says there's still a lot of confusion. We don't know what's going to happen with the, with the trash or the recycling, which is both are due tomorrow. CBS 6 also spoke with a person who came to the street with a package delivery Wednesday, unsure if they could cross the tape. We supported removing the monument, We uh, and we really appreciate the police uh, looking out for us and keeping us safe. But somewhere in this process, the communication broke down.